speaking of lesbians, as we often do, how did you deal? Because th this this conversation is about resilience and about how we deal in a positive way with things that are thrown at us. How the hell did you deal with the anti-lesbian and misogynistic hatred that you got from some quarters, because you were universally loved, as always, but from some bigots, when you came out in the early days, in the in the early 80s? Uh, well, I didn't really see it, uh, you know, face to face. It was kind of the, the, the bigger picture when I was introduced uh, to come on the court. Everybody was cheering when Chris Hebert was introduced or Ivan Gulagong, but when I came out, uh, on the, onto the court, uh, it was muted applause. Uh, it there were some jeers, there were some whistles, and it was hard not to take it personally. But I, I realized it was mostly because I was gay, and some of it was because I was winning too much, perhaps. But you know, Roger Federer never got that kind of uh, welcome, right? Nobody jeers when Roger Federer walks on the court. So um, or or Rafa Nadal, even people if they're not big fans or they they're in the Federer corner, they still cheer when Rafa walks on the court. But that was not the case with me. So uh, it was hard not to take it personally. But it wasn't. It was this body of you know the audience. So one on one, nobody ever came to me and called me you're nothing but a dyke. Nobody said that to me. But I heard then friends or, or women that I met later, people were saying that about me in the audience. But I never heard it. So I would have, of course, uh, told him off if it had been uh, face to face. But, um, you know, I was just trying to win over the audience by who I was. I thought that was enough. And and at the end, they, they were on, on my side, but it took a while. But, um, you know, I was doing what I love, playing tennis, and nobody could keep me from that. So I was lucky in that front. And uh, again, after coming, coming from Czechoslovakia, leaving my country, uh, this kind of stuff wasn't gonna bother me. What bothered me not was not seeing my family for four years. Uh, right. That was the tough part. This some nobody, somebody I don't know. You know, thinks I'm I'm whatever they want to call me. Uh, who cares? And, and that was what was so brilliant for us, young lesbians at the time when you were playing at Wimbledon and we were watching you and we were really inspired by the fact that you got on with it. You were globally uh, admired, respected, loved, you're a champion. And all of a sudden we had a positive lesbian icon role model. And we could say to our mums, or we could say to our colleagues, we could say to people that just thought all lesbians were weirdos and inadequate and freaks. Um, and what would you say about Martina Navrasilova? And I'm telling you, we used your name so often amongst ourselves, but also to others. And it did make a huge difference for us. It was like you were standing there with us. I, I thank you for that. I'm so glad that I didn't misbehave where you couldn't use my hand <laughs> flatly. But I always felt that responsibility as a role model. I always thought about the kids first. And then when I came out, it was also a reflection on the on the LGBT community, uh, certainly on, on women uh, and, and lesbians more than anybody else. So I did feel that responsibility but I always felt it to begin with uh, for to the kids. Like I didn't throw my racket, you know, on the court. I didn't do anything that I was embarrassed about on the court because of uh, athletes supposed to be role models. And I took that role seriously. But I'm glad that you, uh, you, you used my name in a good way where the parents had no comeback. They couldn't say, oh, but she does this or she does that because there was nothing there because I didn't really do anything that was really, really bad. <laughs> you had all of that difficulties to deal with but you just rose above it and you're a warrior and then through the years you've become involved in lots of other social justice movements you have spoken out about everything that is happening to women that you see that you believe to be an injustice and of course we've spoken about Roe versus Wade being overturned in the US and the what's happening in Iran with women I mean what's at the top of your list at the moment about abominations happening to women globally? Uh, well, uh, here in America, of course, it's uh, the abortion right. I mean, it's gone so crazy that there are governors literally calling for the death penalty or for life incarceration of women that have an abortion. Uh, Health care is denied to girls at 12, 13, 14 who had some physical issues that had nothing to do with birth control that need birth control pills. They are now, den they're now denied care life-saving uh you know 
doctor care is 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 uh, not allowed. It has gone so far uh, to the right now. They want to make it a federal law. Uh, it's really crazy, and we have an election here in a month, which uh, you know I've been very active on trying to get people to vote, etc. But th so that's America, uh, big steps backwards, and then of course worldwide, what's going on in Iran now, and and all the Arab countries where women really have no rights or are very uh, very um, um, yeah you know, they're much smaller members of society. They don't they don't have nowhere near equal rights. Uh, but that's been going on. Forever, but that's going the right direction, slowly but surely. But now we're having these fascist governments. So look at Maloney in Italy, uh, Orban in in Hungary. Uh, who knows uh, what's going on? Russia, the nightmare. So Bolsonaro may squeak out in Brazil, and it's all going backwards. You know, patriarchy on steroids. Um, so. Yeah, the fight, it's its funny. It's like we take, you know, a bunch of steps forward, but then there's some steps back that are just so um, unpredictable, like what happened here in, in America. It so, is, and, and, you know, we, we can, I suppose that's what galvanizes a new wave of feminism and rejuvenates those of us that have been feminists for a long time and, and keeps us going. Obviously, we'd rather not have to do this stuff. We'd I'm... rather solve patriarchy. We got rid of patriarchy tomorrow. There was no more rape. No more femicide, no more FGM. But right now, it feels like we're becoming more of a stronger global women's movement. We're connecting more. I think so. And I think that's where the internet, I, was, I had such high hopes for the internet when it first came out. And, and I'm like, oh, this is great. You know, now you can spread truth around the world so quickly, but then you also can spread lies around the world so quickly. And and the lie, as, as you said that, that the lie goes all the way around the world before the truth straps its boots on. I think it was one of the presidents that said that, American presidents. Um, so it's it's been a plus and a minus, but now, um, you know, we, I, I think we just need to keep using it for, for good and, and, and keep shining the light. You just have to shine the light. Without that, um, that, there is no movement forward, and which is why you have to shine the light, you have to speak out, and you have to stand up for yourself, and you have to stand up for others. But also, we have to stand up for ourselves. If you don't stand up for yourself, you cannot expect somebody else to stand up for you. So you're that, right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Which is why it's, it breaks my heart when I see so many young women, clearly under the cosh of the bearded, so-called progressive men, that are telling them porn is empowering, sex work is work, trans mm -hmm. women are women, and you should accept them as your sexual partners. And these young women, I think they're starting to galvanise. There'll be many of them watching this right now at Philia there's going to be a good number of young women, some of them brought by their mothers, some of them right. came to feminism through their own means without any feminist role model except for what they knew about through literature or through their college courts if they were lucky or they just happened to meet a feminist uh, as as we do and it changes our lives. So, so what would you say to those young women who are facing this barrage of sexualization and men sending dick pics and spiking their drinks and hookup culture and all the stuff young women, heterosexual young women are having to deal with right now. Uh, I say be careful. I say uh, stand up for yourself, uh, hang out with friends and, and stay safe and, uh, you know, just keep keep fighting the fight. Uh, I mean, now with the lesbians as well, what's what's hap been happening in, in UK? Uh, dominoes are starting to fall, aren't they? Between Tavistock and the mermaids, uh, they're getting their come up and stonewall. Uh, it's all coming to light. So, um, yeah, I'd say be aware, be involved and be active. You know, um, you have to, again, fight for yourself. As, as a youngster, you think, oh, it's all going to be OK. It doesn't really matter what I do. It's nothing. Nothing makes a difference. Yes, everybody makes a difference. Why do we recycle? You know, maybe we have 100 bottles a year. But when everybody on where I live, it's like maybe 2000 people. There's millions of bottles right there. Uh, so it all adds up. So even if you don't think you matter, you do matter. So, uh, you know, again, sur surround yourself with people that are like-minded, that will support you, that are positive, and, uh, and and just fight. You have to keep fighting. You you are someone that stands your ground, and you're also someone who, if you, if you did get something wrong, if you did read something and take the wrong impression or fact from it, you would say... Oh, absolutely. I got that wrong. 
I try not to not to speak out. I try not to speak out on things that I don't know anything about. Uh, so you know, I I try to educate myself first. But I thought I knew enough to say say what I said about women's sports, and it turns out I was right. Uh, but um, but anyway, um, I I I know what I don't know. Smart enough for that, which perhaps is the problem with people that are not that smart. They don't know what they don't know, and they don't care. <laughs> Will you just? Give a wave to the women at the conference and wish them well. And we all wish you well, Martina. We all love you. So it's been brilliant. Hey, yeah. Tilia, I wish I were there, but uh, I'm sure that you'll do great without me. And uh, fingers crossed for everybody there.